And now we will give the floor to Sanjay Pradhan, the CEO of the Open Government Partnership. I'd like to begin by first expressing our tremendous appreciation to the government and civil society of Argentina for hosting this important gathering. And like to express our tremendous appreciation for your leadership on open government, which is inspiring other countries in the region and around the, around the globe. It's, uh, it's a great pleasure and source of hope for me to be here. Great pleasure because Argentina, uh, because the Americas more broadly, the Americas region, represent the vibrant heart of OGP. And this vibrancy is so palpably evident in this extraordinary gathering of stakeholders from throughout the continent who are working together to make governments more open to citizens. This collective strength that is on display here will be needed as, because we also meet at a time when we confront our open government movement, confronts extraordinary challenges. Civic space is under attack in over 100 countries, including some in the region. Democracy is under threat in several parts of the world. Fueled by the rise of fake news and manipulation of social media to spread social discord. Globally, citizen trust in government is at an all-time low. Citizens perceive government to be captured by privileged elites who are enriching themselves, and this perception is fueled by major corruption scandals like Odebrecht, Panama Papers, uh, Paradise Papers, and in the region, this comes on top of long-standing challenges of extreme inequality, crime, and violence. So why do I then say that I have hope and I say I have hope because right here uh, in OGP, I see glimmers of an alternative path, a more hopeful path, which can show a better way to the region and the world, a path that puts citizens first. So right here in this room, you have reformers who are working to ensure that citizens in Paraguay can oversee government contracting, which can be the hotbed of corruption. Right here in this room, you have reformers who are working to ensure that citizens in Honduras can oversee the delivery of life-saving medicines. So citizens in Chile can monitor meetings and donations between public officials and lobbyists to curb influence peddling. So young women right here in Buenos Aires can access reproductive health services. These are inspirational reforms that put citizens first. But you know, they are too few and far between. We have to join forces to scale this up. And we have unprecedented opportunity in the Americas to do so in the next year. In 2018, 14 OGP countries and six subnational OGP pioneers will develop action plans. This provides a huge opportunity to scale up ambitious reforms across countries using these action plans. So let us commit that in the next year, in these action plans, we will double the percentage of ambitious commitments, which are judged to be transformative to society, from just 12% at present in the Americas to at least 25%. And in 2018, seven countries in the region are going to undergo presidential elections, which gives a great opportunity to get political candidates to commit to advance open government. So in this context, let me quickly offer three priorities for our collective action. First, we must protect and enhance civic space which is under attack, including in some countries in the region. In some countries, civil society has been very critical of government and has walked out of the national process altogether. But even in these contexts, there's a commitment to leverage the OGP platform to speak truth to power and work towards a genuine partnership between government and civil society. So as America's heads into this election season, I would call on you to demand that candidates at all levels and from all political parties publicly commit to protecting 
and enhancing civic space and fostering a genuine dialogue between government and civil society. And you know, this is so appropriate for Latin America because you are the birthplace, the home of a genuine partnership between government and civil society, which we have seen here today, because you have originated the multi-stakeholder forums of government and civil society, which has spread to 45 countries globally. We need to sustain this, and we also need to institutionalize this in other 30 countries in OGP globally, where co-creation is just check checking the box. And we need to be, as we go into elections, we need to be inspired by the inspiring examples of Uruguay's multi-stakeholder decree or Chile's open government table, which actually institutionalizes civic space and dialogue between government and civil society so they sustain through political transition. The second priority which I would, I would just mention is I would call on all stakeholders to leverage the OGP platform to advance the empowerment of women. As uh, uh, Costa Rica, Colombia, and Argentina are doing, women represent half our population. Their empowerment can make a lasting impact on health, education, nutritional outcomes for all of society. Their voices must be heard in each and every commitment of OGP. And we also need to leverage the OGP platform to advance the inclusion of minority groups such as indigenous communities and LGBTQ as Costa Rica and Canada are doing. And the third and final priority for collective action is we must tackle grand corruption because that is what corrodes the trust of citizens. For instance, through open contracting, which makes open all contracts for citizens to monitor, which has saved in Ukraine one billion dollars in two years, and which, and which in, in the present year, 27 OGP governments in subnational and subnational are embracing open contracting. We need to end anonymous companies because we have seen in the Panama Papers and the Paradise Papers because they're used as cover by corrupt leaders to, to stash away stolen wealth. So it's encouraging that we see 15 OGP countries that have commitments on beneficial ownership transparency. But you know, the real test is not going to be just the commitments. It is going to be the credible implementation of these commitments. And once they are credibly implemented, it will run up against political obstacles and political vested interests. And for this, we call upon reformers in government, civil society, private sector to join forces, leverage the OGP platform to forge coalitions to overcome these political vested interests and formidable odds. At the global level, we are seeing this coalition of new coalition of new global leaders which are standing up for openness and democracy, beginning with our co-chairs of France, Georgia, and Canada, joined by countries like Argentina and others and new civil society leadership. We need these coalitions at all levels. If OGP is going to be a powerful movement for openness in today's world and a countervailing force against the rise of closed government in several parts of the region and around the world. All of this will take a lot of courage. The Latin root of the word courage is core. It literally means heart. So I end where I began. Latin America represents the vibrant heart of OGP. If there is one region which can stand up against corruption, which can stand up against vested interests for ordinary citizens, it is you, the champions of open government in the Americas region. Thank you for your heart. Thank you for your conviction and courage. It is this which will propel us against these dark, looming crowds of challenges to deliver on that precious OGP vision of putting citizens first, of ensuring that governments truly empower and serve their citizens, rather than serving themselves. Thank you. Gracias, Sanjay.